Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Tuesday evening, June 2nd. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center for the best information. Well, we now have Tropical Storm Crystal Ball here in the extreme southern Gulf of Mexico, now upgraded from a tropical depression today with winds at a maximum up to 45 miles per hour based on data from a Hurricane Hunter aircraft that's flying around in there this evening. And we see a more organized storm in general with a central clump of deep convection that is near the center and just east of the center, which is located right about here. Uh, if we look at the radar picture from Mexico, we can see the rotation showing up in here. And again, most of the convection currently kind of on the east side due to a little bit of mid-level shear that's occurring out of the northwest. Um, but this in general is much more organized than it was earlier in the day. If we look at the first recon mission earlier this afternoon at about 2 p.m. Eastern time when the plane left, we had a pressure of 1,004 millibars, and we had this rather broad structure, especially on the northeast side where the wind maximum was way out here relative to the center, and we had this broad kind of uh, egg-shaped uh, vortex envelope here extending a little bit more to the northeast than in any other direction, and this was rather broad and diffuse compared with the current uh, recon mission, and we have a much closer wind maximum on the north side to the center that now has a pressure of 997 millibars and a much tighter looking circulation and more bona fide TC type of look. And this is now intensifying as we go through the evening, sitting just offshore of the Mexican coastline down here. And this has actually moved a little bit almost due east of its position earlier in the day. The last recon mission found it somewhere over here and it has moved a little bit east of that position. And part of the short-term movement is due to the shape of the envelope within which uh, crystal ball is embedded. Again, earlier in the day, we kind of had this egg-shaped circulation that was elongated toward the northeast just a bit. And what's happened is that crystal ball being embedded within the southwestern part of this envelope has kind of been rotated around a little bit to the east by the flow around the envelope. And now the egg shape elongation is more toward the north northwest here and the cyclone is embedded still in the southern side. So what this is doing is the rotation of this larger envelope uh, with crystal balls small circulation is causing the storm to do a little bit of a loop-de-loop -loop right here and it's currently on the eastward leg of that loop. Now if this was the only thing acting on crystal ball then you would expect this to loop it back around and kind of turn toward the north here without moving down into Mexico. However, this is not the only steering influence at work. And if we look at the water vapor satellite loop here, we'll see that what we talked about yesterday is starting to happen with this ridge building over Mexico. And you can kind of see this arching clockwise flow across Mexico that is now crashing down into crystal balls area from the northwest. You can see these cloud elements drifting down and this is in the mid to upper troposphere and we can even see some of these elements if you look closely moving out of the north on the northern side of the circulation itself. And so this is now starting to apply pressure to crystal ball pinning it down in the southeastern Bay of Campeche and trying to push it ashore into Mexico down here. And it's really a, a competing set of influences right now between this pressure from the large scale steering flow and the smaller scale processes involved with crystal ball kind of rotating within its own envelope in here in that monsoon gyre that it spawned within. So what's gonna happen in the next short term? Well, we've come uh, a little bit of a ways from yesterday in terms of knowing where this is going to be. We know it's not going to be over here. Uh, the models have corrected, namely the European has come much farther east, <clears throat> but even it still has been a little bit too far west today. If we look at the European Ensemble locations valid 8 p.m. Eastern time, which is around the time that this video is being recorded, this is from Matt Onderlindy's site. This is the set of possible locations from the 50 Ensemble members from the EPS. The actual location is about here on the northeastern edge of this cloud of possible locations, indicating that the model is still experiencing a little bit of short-term bias with the motion of the system. It's not terribly unsurprising given that slow-moving cyclones are hard to forecast because any error can, can mean a lot when the flow is very weak. Um, but 
th that said, we're still seeing some uncertainty because the models are still struggling with the slow movement. So whether this moves inland or not, still technically a question, but the consensus is for some sort of a dive south or southeastward into Mexico and then perhaps getting pulled back north, either back offshore or still inland. And we can kind of outline two general scenarios for Cristobal going forward. And I'm going to show you the GFS first. This is the 850 millibar vorticity or spin here in color and the height contours. And this is valid for uh, 24 hours uh, from about now, Wednesday afternoon. And this shows the storm coming on shore. That's the Mexican coastline. It does move on shore on the GFS. And uh, at this point, it stays on shore for some time, so that if I skip all the way from Wednesday afternoon to Friday morning, you can see the remnants here over Mexico or northern Guatemala. And at this point, it's been on shore long enough to, to kind of just die there. Uh, the nice tight cyclone we have now weakens entirely, and what we're left with is the broad monsoon gyre. That's still there, will still be there, no matter what, in a few days. And it's really a question of whether Cristobal is still here in the center of it or not. On the GFS, Cristobal does die. But again, in this situation, what starts happening is, regardless of what Cristobal is doing, we have an upper level trough starting to dig in at the upper levels of the atmosphere into the Gulf of Mexico. That's starting to perturb this mon monsoon gyre and try to drag it northward into the Gulf of Mexico. And this is going to happen regardless of what Cristobal is doing. So on the GFS, what we have is the gyre start coming north and we start to see this development of a broad low pressure that starts to strengthen over the southern Gulf. And uh, this is pretty ugly here in terms of uh, the structure on this particular model run. This is a large gyre with basically a warm front here extending to the northeast and uh, very broad and messy, which is not atypical for early hurricane season storms in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, but it continues north and we have this broad structure. Uh, this would not be a very strong tropical cyclone per se on the GFS verbatim. There's a lot of dry air getting wrapped in here in brown and this would almost be subtropical like almost um, instead of fully tropical on this particular run with this broad monsoon gyre. There would be you know potentially storm surge and rain and flooding problems with this kind of storm but not exactly your heavy hitting hurricane wind threat on this scenario. Now, the European model has a slightly different take. Uh, it still goes inland, like the GFS here. This is Thursday morning now. The model has it coming on shore, but it doesn't spend quite as long down here over Mexico as it does on the GFS, such that by Friday morning, it has actually popped back out over water, kind of where it started, uh, and it is now over the eastern Bay of Campeche once more and strengthening again on this particular model such that when we get to Saturday morning what we have is again the monsoon gyre similar to what we have on the GFS it's the same kind of thing except this time we have a TC or a more well-defined tropical cyclone here embedded in the middle of it and on the European this would facilitate maybe a slightly stronger storm as it moves up toward the Gulf Coast we're still going to have all this moisture on the east side plenty of rain rotating around this big monsoon gyre but maybe a chance for a little stronger storm in the middle of it all that could present a, a greater storm surge and wind threat once it makes landfall on the US Gulf Coast which is going to happen at some point this weekend or early next week this is still a big question mark, and whether or not this uh, storm dies entirely over Mexico during the next 24 to 48 hours is a legitimate question that we still don't quite know the full answer to. And this is going to be something that we have to watch over the next day or two quite carefully. Now, this storm is going to come north regardless, whether it's still intact or whether it's just this broad envelope of moisture that comes up instead and something new forms. You know, it's still going to be a flooding threat and a rainfall problem for the Gulf Coast, most likely. And right now we're kind of targeting uh, this area from the upper Texas Gulf Coast to the Alabama Gulf Coast is kind of the general area we expect this to go right now. But remember, this is a slow moving storm. We've been having trouble forecasting exactly where it's going to be near Mexico. And it could go a number of different directions in general over the next few days and it's still a five-day forecast here on the NHC official plot on Sunday afternoon five days out there's a lot of potential error here you can see the error cone extending quite wide so there's a range of possibilities for where this could end up we're likely to see a rather broad area of heavy rain and flooding concern regardless of where the center of this thing goes so if you're in the North Gulf Coast in general 
be preparing for a potentially significant weather event as we head into the weekend and potentially early next week, Monday or Tuesday, depending on the exact timing. I should mention that this timing is also a little uncertain. It could be plus or minus one full day from what you see here. It could be in this region of the Gulf on Saturday or maybe even Monday uh, based on exactly how fast it gets pulled northward. So a few questions yet to answer, but we sort of have a general idea of something coming north later in the week. So be prepared. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.